بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. To attend the event in Sydney on the 2nd of December, but uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to make it, so I apologize. Instead, I'm recording this lecture, and I hope I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can all benefit from the topic that I'm about to deliver. The topic assigned to me in the theme of character and manners is assuming well of your brethren and not judging too quickly. Now, first thing I want to say is this. Any da'i, any person who speaks about Islam, you need to understand something. Talking about the deen, especially about character, is something very heavy. No one is perfect in it. And just because we speak so well, it doesn't, if we do, it's just a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mean that anyone should take one person as the ultimate role model. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is our own role model. And you should take different people as role models for different aspects of character. You might find some person who's got patience in, in, his perfect, in, in, in a very... Um, in an excellent form. Others may have forgiveness or empathy. Others may have a firm approach in, 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 in a just way. Uh, so whatever qualities or character you see in a person, then alhamdulillah you can take that as an example for yourself. But never take one person, you know, we don't have a, this idea of celebrities in Islam. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. This advice goes to me first and then to you. So please take it as though I am sharing it with you, not teaching you. Firstly, there is an ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu jatanibu kathiran min al-dhanni inna ba'd al-dhanni ithm. Allah says, O you who believe, avoid much suspicion. For verily, most suspicion that comes to you is a sin. Allah addresses the believers because really only the believers can take this advice heavily and try to practice it as much as they can. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention in this verse, you know, uh, to be perfect. He, he said, avoid much suspicion, which means that it's natural that, you know, you suspect negative things about people. You assume negatively about certain people based on what they say or the way they look or the way they act. This doesn't mean that we're allowed to act upon that suspicion every time we suspect someone, right? The, what the ayah is talking about is when you assume negatively about someone, it should not stay in your heart. It should not stay in your mind. You shouldn't start believing it as though it's a fact. That's the sin. But if you randomly assume inside your mind as a matter of just thought, but you don't talk about it, you don't act on it, then inshallah, you're fine. That'll be like when the Sahabas came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, there are things that, there are thoughts that come to our mind We'd rather burn than to tell you what they are. The Prophet ﷺ became happy about that. And he said, Do you really find yourselves like that? They said, yes. He said, Alhamdulillah, الذي رد كيد الشيطان إلى الوسوسة. Alhamdulillah, who has reduced the power of the shaitan to mere whispers. So if, you, if a whisper comes to your head that's negative, whether it's judgmental about someone or not, then uh, or, or otherwise, then don't act upon it. and Don't keep it inside of you and start believing it as if it's a fact. Then inshallah, that shows that you are strong and that your shaitan is weak if you don't act upon it and you don't speak about it. My brothers and sisters in Islam, therefore a Muslim should assume as a standard positively about their brothers and sisters no matter what they see in them. And this is how the Prophet wasallam taught us in his character. There was uh, in, uh, in Sahih Muslim, uh, there, there, there came the story of Usama ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu where he said, I was sent out with the Prophet ﷺ on uh, a battle. And uh, then there was, uh, we won that battle and there was a man from among the enemies who ran away. So I and another person from the Ansar chased after him. As we approached him, he turned around and said, La ilaha illallah. The Ansari man stood back and didn't touch him. Usama said, but I went and killed him. And then I started to regret what I had done. When the news came to the Prophet ﷺ and we told him what we had done, the Prophet, peace be upon him, looked at me and said, Ya Usama, you killed a man 
after he said, La ilaha illallah, he said, Ya Rasulullah, it was very obvious that he was scared. He just, you know, he just said it out of fear. The Prophet ﷺ repeated, Ashaqaqta an qalbihi. Did you open up his heart to see what's inside? Did you open up his heart to see what's inside? And Usama kept repeating it. So it was very obvious that he was afraid. The sword, you know, the, the sun was shining off the sword, on, you know, on top of his his neck. He said it out of fear. The Prophet ﷺ did not accept his excuse. He said, Ashaqaqta an qalbihi wa qad qala la ilaha illallah. He said, La ilaha illallah. Did you open up his heart, ya Usama, to see? Usama then said, That was the day when I wished I had not become a Muslim until that time. I wish I'd never become a Muslim until that day. He regretted it so badly. So my brothers and sisters, look at that. How the Prophet ﷺ is saying, but something that to us might seem so obvious, you know, he's just saying out of fear, or he's got an agenda behind it, or whatever. The shaitan comes to us and makes us assume so many bad things about a person. And sometimes we start to think that we are so self-righteous, or that we are so perfect. You know, some of us we say, you know, my judgment's always right. I never get it wrong. Allahu Akbar. This is arrogance. How can you possibly ever know what's inside of a person's heart or mind when the Prophet ﷺ himself couldn't do it? My brothers and sisters in Islam. Judging people is something that we as a Muslim community struggle with these days. It's causing enmity. It's causing division. It's causing breakup of families, breakup of relationships, breakup of friendships. And people are not trusting each other much anymore. We are using the social media platform also to judge people and to send indirect negative vibes towards other people, assuming things about them. And not everything you read on there is aimed at you. We, some, the shaitan sometimes comes to us and says, oh, look what that person wrote, or look what that person said, or look what that person, you know, how they looked at you. They must mean something about you. My brothers and sisters in Islam, take it easy on yourself. Sometimes people say something, but it's not really aimed at you. We hear some young people saying, only God can judge me. We all know where they came from. Tupac and the likes. People like saying it. Why? Because it helps you feel good about yourself, about the wrong that you're doing. Now, if you're saying only God can judge me, in the sense that you feel ashamed of yourself and that Allah SWT will judge you and you're going to fix yourself, then that's fine. But if you're saying only God can judge me as though you're justifying your shameful act and you want to continue it, then this is a very dangerous statement. It's as if you're saying, only God can judge me, meaning I'm ready to face Him, I know that I'm going to suffer the consequence, and therefore I'm going to continue, and on a day of judgment, I'll just cop the sin. Only God can judge me. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Umar ibn Khattab anhu used to say, Rahimallahu mri'in ahda ilayya ayubi. May Allah have mercy on a person who gifts me my flaws. Any person, Muslim, non-Muslim, whether he likes him or doesn't, if he tells me my flaws, it's a gift for me because I get to develop and improve myself. So my brothers and sisters, think about and judge yourselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges you. That is easier and better for yourself. If you're going to judge people based on your assumptions, then that is a lie. That is a lie. The Prophet sallallahu said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالظَّنْ Be aware of assuming about people. In, فَإِنَّ الظَّنَّ أَكْذَبُ الْحَدِيثِ For assuming about other people is the most lying form of speeches or of whispers. It whispers in your head. Brothers and sisters in Islam, even if what you assume about a person is true, you should not talk about it. You should not judge that person. This is not a good form of bringing people closer. Remember yourself. None of us is free of flaws. And if anyone was to, if everybody saw the secrets of everyone else behind closed doors, nobody would trust anyone or like anyone or marry anyone or have a relationship with anyone or have a business with anybody or anything. Everybody will be divided. Imam Shafi'i used to say, Know that if people love you or they, they are impressed by you, then they are only impressed by you because of the cover which Allah has placed upon you. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, we all have flaws. Judge yourself before judging other people. There is a story which I'd like to relate to you and I'm going to take some lessons out of it which I think are worthy. It's the story about Aisha, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, when she was accused of dirty behavior, zina and the likes of it. It's a long story, but I'll cut it short and summarize it. She said, I was, I went with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on a journey and with him were his companions. And it was a tradition that they carry me in an oasis, something that was covered and there were uh, that carry, four men would carry me. She said, I was very light, so you couldn't tell if you're carrying me or not. 
So we rested and I went out to the bathroom. Uh, no one saw me go. As I was returning, I remembered, I, I, I noticed that my necklace had fallen out. When I went to get it back and return, the caravan had gone. And I was left alone in the middle of the desert. So I sat down crying. Then came one of the Sahabas named Safwan radiallahu anhu. He used to follow a few meters back to make sure nothing is left behind. He saw me and he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He leant down and let me climb onto the camel while he uh, uh, steered the camel, um, directed the camel towards Medina. When we arrived, one of the munafiqeen saw uh, me, a man in, from, the, from the people of Medina, and he said a statement. Wallahi, uh, he is not safe of her, nor is she safe of him. Now, Aisha Adelana didn't actually hear that. She's just saying this is what was being said later on. She found that out. And the news spread. People started saying, my God, the Prophet's wife, you know, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some, you know, something has happened, something dirty has happened. And unfortunately, even among the Sahaba, some of them said some words to that effect. Some said more words, others said less words, and there are those who said, no, we have nothing to do with this, we better not speak about it. Time went on and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started receiving news from dozens and dozens of people, to the point we started to get affected. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then started to change his attitude and move towards Aisha, the Aisha Adana said, I, I didn't know why the Prophet had changed his attitude towards me. He was cold and a little bit distant. The Prophet ﷺ was waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send something to make her innocent. So she asked him to go to her father, her parents. He gave her permission. She went there. And uh, after that, she found out from her friend that the people were saying this terrible news about her. The Prophet ﷺ approached her and said, Ya Aisha, if you had done anything minor, then admit it to Allah and ask Allah to forgive you. For If a, if a person admits to Allah their mistake and seeks his forgiveness, Allah will forgive them. Aisha Adelana became so hurt, she turned to her father and said, reply to the Messenger of God. He said, what am I going to say to the Messenger of God? Her mother, her mother couldn't say anything. So she turned away from all of them and said, I only say what Yaqub salam used to say, إِنَّمَا أَشْكُ بَثِّي وَحُزْنِ إِلَى اللَّهِ I complain my sorrow and sadness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the next few nights and days, Aisha Adelana lost weight, she wouldn't eat, she would cry heavily. Until one day the Prophet ﷺ came to her with a smile and he said, Ya Aisha, Allah has made you innocent. And he recited the verses in Surah An-Nur to her. Her parents said, get up and hug your, your husband. She said, no Allah, I will not do that. I will only thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today. The verses in the Quran which I want to get the lessons out of are as follows. And I'll read them in English. It says, Indeed, those who came with falsehood are a group among you. Do not think it is bad for you, rather it is good for you, for every person among them is what punishment he has earned from the sin, and those who took upon him themselves the greater portion thereof for him is a greater punishment. It is good for you, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sifting through the community to teach them a big lesson and finding out the good from the bad. Some of them spoke a little bit, Allah gave them a little bit of the punishment. Those who spoke more, they got more of the punishment in this world and in the hereafter. My brothers and sisters in Islam, you know when you hear rumors about someone or news, even if it was partly true, and you speak about it, you will get the consequence to the portion of how much you were involved. There is another verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقُمْ بِنَبَأٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا If someone comes to you with a news, that is negative. You know, it's a corrupt news. Corrupt here means that um, you, you bring news which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. It could be true sometimes, but it's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. It could be a good person who's come to you with this news. Allah says, verify it. In case you talk about that person something out of ignorance, and then you will regret what you said. Ignorance meaning you don't know the whole full story. Therefore, to judge them when you've only got the news partly from a person or even two people. Sometimes a person can come and exaggerate something to you. For example, I might say to you, uh, uh, you know, the house, the house, uh, this fire in the house and there's children in there. And I say it with such emotion, you're going to think that the house is on fire. But when you actually reach there, you'll find that I'm not really lying. There is a candle with a bit of fire, a flame burning in there. And there are children in the house. So I didn't really lie, but my emotions made you think otherwise. And this is what it means. When someone comes to you with the news, there could be some truth to it. Sometimes it's a false, sometimes it's completely a lie, sometimes it's full truth, but it could be exaggerated and made you to think something otherwise. My brothers and sisters, that's the first thing. The second thing before judging a person, you should ask yourself, am I, is it my business to judge this person? Is it my business? Do I have any benefit in doing so? No. So you've got to see someone who has benefit in doing so, such as a person who is able to have 
a means of helping that other person or warning that other person or stopping that other person. So not everybody just can come in and say, oh, I better verify, I better verify. Not everybody has to verify. 90% of us I, it, have no business in verifying. Even if you say, I heard it from both sides. So what if you heard it from both sides? You are not in a position to take um, action unless you can, unless you can make a difference. And when you do that, you do it um, carefully. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, remember ourselves. We could be in that position and judging other people can be a very big problem. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the verses of the Quran go on, right, by saying, why was it not, you know, that some of you could have said, why didn't you bring four witnesses? Why was it not that some of you could have said, subhanAllah, this is a terrible accusation, we have nothing to say. This is the way a Muslim is when they hear news about someone else that is negative. You should stay out of it and try to help to minimize it and help the person or protect the person. And if it's something that is harming other people, then you do what is necessary if you're in that position. My brothers and sisters in Islam, therefore, assuming about other people without the facts, and even when you do have the facts, you should ask yourself, should I really go and judge that person or should I not? Is it going to be beneficial or not? There was a Sahabi, uh, this is in Sahih al-Jami' by Shaykh al-Albani. This particular Sahabi used to make the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laugh. And uh, used to make jokes. One day, he was brought to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be whipped for drinking alcohol. He used to drink alcohol a lot. And every time he'd be found out, brought to be whipped for he lashes. Until one day, one of the, uh, the men said, May Allah curse him. Doesn't he know every time he drinks he has to come and face the Prophet ﷺ? Does he have no shame? May Allah curse him. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, Do not curse him, please. For all I know is that he loves Allah and his messenger. Wow. And this is even like, it's open. The guy is drinking. The guy is, is being whipped, lashed. And yet the Prophet ﷺ still could find good in him. My brothers and sisters in Islam, how wouldn't it be much better if... We can see the good in a person, no matter how much bad we see in them. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, when he talks about the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, those who were even the enemies at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa those who used to fight it. Allah used to say, it says in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, and among the people of the book are those whom you can entrust with a camel load of, 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 of things, and those who you can't trust at all. He still mentioned the good and the bad about them. Surely every person does have good in them and does have bad. I get surprised when some people, they get upset with someone or somebody had wronged them and then they make them their full enemy. They see no good in them anymore. They would have known them for 20 years and there would be a great relationship. They would have had known so many good things about them. But as soon as you, they hurt you with something, you begin to judge them as though they have no more good in them. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah, this is haram. There's always good in them. It's amazing that when it comes to us, we remember the good in ourselves and think, you know, why have they forgotten all the good in me? But when it comes to us judging other people, we kind of forget all the good that was in them. My brothers and sisters in Islam, always look at the good and bad of a person. And this is the way the Muslim is. You know, we are brothers and sisters in Islam. If you are wronged by someone and your right has been taken, then verify whether you are in the right first of all or not. After you've done that, then see what you can do about it within limits. You know, you've got to be careful. What If I say something, where is it going to take me? If I act in a certain way, where is it going to take me? You can take your right back, but there's no need to abuse that person, insult that person, you know, tarnish that person. Listen to this beautiful story. Um, a group of Jews uh, came to the Prophet ﷺ's house and said to him, As-Salamu Alaik. as is a, a trick. You're supposed to say, As-Salamu Alaik. as Alaik. They take off the lamb to trick the Prophet ﷺ. as means death upon you. Now the Prophet, peace be upon him, heard them. And he said, Wa alaykum. And upon you. But Aisha radiallahu anha didn't hear that. And she started screaming at them. Alaykum, God's curse be upon you. The Prophet ﷺ stopped her and said, No, ya Aisha, but rifq. Take care of yourself. Have, you know, look after your own, your own character. Did you not hear what I said? I said to them, Wa alaykum. And upon you. So he took his right back, but he didn't have to abuse. He said, A Muslim does not abuse and, and, and become swearing and insulting and use bad language like that. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, even if a person has wronged you and you judge upon them like that, there's always still some good in them, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, you know, sometimes some people are out of character. You know, we're, we're human beings who have emotions and flaws. Sometimes you're angry. At times you want, you know, you feel like you want revenge. At times you're irritated. And, you know, you're out of character. 
And you know, the last thing you want is someone to come and judge you as though you are that character. You know, Rasulullah he warned us of calling people hypocrites, for example. It's very quick that when we see someone doing something opposite to what they said, we say, oh, what a hypocrite. They're hypocrites. Very quick to judge. You know that word hypocrite? Rasulullah said, whoever calls another Muslim a hypocrite or a kafir, then one of them is. It has to come on one of you. So if they're not hypocrites in the eyes of Allah, you are. You might think they are. Hypocrisy in Islam doesn't only mean that you say something opposite to what you do. It's a whole character trait. For example, if somebody lied once or twice, we don't call them a liar. We say they lied. Right? And we don't have to say it to the world, but we say, no, they lied. Someone stole once. He stole or she stole once. But when you have it as a habit, as a character trait, then it becomes your character. Be very careful about judging people in that way, my brothers and sisters in Islam. You might see some sister without hijab, and then we start to judge her as that she is, you know, a bad person. How do you know? Maybe they pray, alhamdulillah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and their hasanat, you know, are so high that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive her. But, I'm not saying that you shouldn't wear your hijab, but what I'm trying to say is, uh, you see a flaw in a person, it doesn't mean we have to judge everything about them and say, you can talk about the behavior, you can talk about the action, for example, a brother, you know, he's, I remember once uh, studying back in Lebanon, uh, a sheikh, uh, I was standing next to a sheikh and a student walked in and he had shaved in his beard. Um, at that time we used to think, oh, you know, you know, we, we kind of, we're quick at judging. I was young and I said to the, to, to uh, the sheikh, Look at this person who's, you know, shaving his beard, you know, what's happened to his iman. And that teacher said to me something very important. He said to me, maybe he doesn't know. So what do you mean? He's here in a, in a religious school, he's learning about religion, we were studying at a religious academy, we got Mashaikh teaching, and, and, and he said, what if he doesn't know? And he was a senior to me? Now, obviously he did know, but the Sheikh was teaching me that Look, you know, assume positively about your brother. I later found out that he was cooking and the fire went into his beard and therefore he had to take it off in order to grow again. Brothers and sisters in Islam, in conclusion, this topic is so important and we can keep going on and on. But assuming of your brothers and sisters positively is better than assuming negatively. Why? If you assume negatively, most likely it's going to be wrong. And even if it is true, it's not going to benefit you anything except create more enmity. So assume of each other well, and the, positive, the negative will always show by itself, if they deserve. Think about yourself and judge yourself before judging others. Number two, uh, when it comes to people seeing your faults, you know, look at it as a positive thing for you to develop. Number four, none of us is self-righteous. We, we are all striving and trying to become better people. The most important is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uh, assumes of us in secret and in open. And we all fall into sin. None of us is safe from that. So repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The advice is to me before you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Make us better mu'mineen. Reward us for our good work and forgive us for our bad work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the righteous, the just and the people who see good in others.